Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the second webinar that we're hosting from Luxendi. Uh, in this webinar, Cicato will announce a little bit about the Bluetooth controls, and I would like to give the words to Patrick van der Meulen from Cicato. Good morning, Mats. Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, as Mats already explained, um, we're going to look into the Cicato controls uh, Bluetooth match system and highlight its features, functions, and advantages, and describe one or two of many worldwide use cases. If you have any questions, please uh, put them into the chat, and we will discuss all the questions at the end of the presentation. Please enjoy the presentation. So as a way of an agenda, um, I'm going to begin with smart wireless features. I will cover what the features of our system are and illustrate how we've put the technology to use in actual installations. Secondly, we'll provide an overview of the fundamentals of Bluetooth Mesh as the underlying architecture for our control system, as well as providing the option to deploy beacons and what that offers to you. Then we will have a look at the connectivity across all devices and describe the system building blocks after which we will look at the specification process for a Cicato wireless control system. Then we will have a description of the software and importantly, even more, the services which Cicato can provide around this solution. Before finishing with an overview of the third party devices, which integrate seamlessly into our system. But firstly, I'd like to begin with a case study to illustrate how an actual installation makes use of some of the features available within the system and the positive effects they deliver to uh, the end user, but also to uh, the visitor to enhance visitor experience. So what you see in front of you is a, a picture of the Van Gogh Museum. It's actually the new entrance that was built a few years ago. It's based in Amsterdam, uh, the Netherlands. So there are 1,400 Bluetooth enabled light sources installed within uh, uh, within the uh, the galleries alongside with uh, over 200 centers and they combine uh, a complete in integrated control system each con gallery contains multiple sensors and each light is programmed to respond in a different manner to inputs from up to four with switches and schedules the issue we tackle here firstly concerns the ability the subtle orchestrate the reaction of different light node, lighting nodes based on multiple sensor inputs, but also to define and program a hierarchy of commands coming from each of the individual uh, inputs, and which takes which one pre takes precedence over which. The beauty in this respect of a mesh system is that there's no latency effect or complications you might see from other centralized controller systems sending out commands. With our Bluetooth mesh control, system, each input triggers a reaction from the lighting nodes within milliseconds. So firstly, let's have a look at the user experience. Each gallery, as we said, contains multiple motion sensors. The idea is that a visitor, when a visitor moves from one gallery to the next, the sensor in the first gallery triggers the lighting in the next to slowly raise over a number of seconds. This means the visitor never feels in a cocoon of light. There's light in the periphery, but also that there's no abrupt changes which will make their experience bad. We have very subtle orchestrated energy saving via present detection. There's no movement detected after five seconds, then the lighting fades down. On top of this, there's also lock sensing. The art artificial lighting is dimmed or even switched off if there's enough natural light to retain the design Design, designed elimination level. Within the hierarchy of commands, present detection comes first. If there's no one present, the lighting is off. But when it's on, it's tempered by daylighting, daylight sensing. But this is only half of the story. The major concern within the museum is the levels of light the paintings are exposed to. So far, we have described the operation of what I will call the house lighting that will provide ambient lighting within the galleries. Picture-specific lighting is controlled by separate sensors. 
and only activates when a visitor is close enough to view a specific artwork, not when somebody simply enters the gallery. The direct lighting, which each painting is exposed to, is carefully monitored and adjusted to ensure no damage is caused to the paintings. It's also worth noting that the work to implement this system was carried out overnight with no disruption to the museum daytime visiting hours and no requirement to remove the paintings from the installation during the refit. No new track was installed, no new wires were pulled, no holes in the wall, no dust. The results are improved visitor experience, significant savings in energy and maintenance, and of course, the museum goal. So in terms of smart wireless features, the diagram on the right of the slide is a representation of the makeup of the Cicada control system. The inner wheel depicts the system components, which the icons, whilst the icons on the outer edge represent the features, functions, and uses which encompass these components. The first benefit we encounter from the use of smart controls relates to energy savings. Recent studies showed a reduction in energy usage of between 15 and 25% are possible if you utilize your lighting in a smart way. This results in savings both in terms of expenditure, but also reduces environmental impacts. There's nothing in new incorporating trying to reduce energy usage and associated costs. In the past, in the UK, actually, they actually put a, a label next to the switch to turn off the lighting if you were the last one to remove the, the room. But now we're going to make it in an automatic way. So by implementing in a smart wireless control system, we can automate the process of ensuring the correct amount of light is delivered to any given space based on usage and surrounding conditions, while still allowing individuals to override the automated lighting settings while they are in that space and removing most of all the light when the space is not used. Our smart system can facilitate, facilitate daylight harvesting to achieve this. Bluetooth controlled light sources can be programmed to react to lux levels with a space and automatically adjust their output to meet regulatory requirements, such as those set out in the workspace regulations. Thereby, again, ensuring we only use the required amount of energy. The ability to set color temperature takes this concept a stage further and tunable white light sources can be used to address circadian requirements and indeed plant walls, both of which are being increasingly used to improve work environments. Our smart system allows us to apply these settings to simply to single luminaires or predefined groups of luminaires and to incorporate different settings for different luminaires into programmed scenes, which can then be recalled as a response to triggers from wall switches, sensors, phone app, or schedules based on time of day. All this allows us to create comfortable spaces for all types of use within a building. Smart accuracy begins with ensuring the correct levels of light when an area or room is in use. But this concept can also be extended to include automated temperature and humidity settings. Our Bluetooth sensors can pass an environmental data to other Bluetooth control systems or via a gateway into a building management system to assist with ensuring all aspects of a location, not just the lighting, but also providing optimum comfort levels and adapting in real time to environmental changes. Traffic management begins with ensuring to correct sized spaces. It's allocated to any given number of people. Again, we are able to extend this idea using beacon apps and technology to map traffic flow and football within a building. Identifying bottlenecks and in the current climate use lighting to signal when the space is full in terms of maintenance and so social uh, distancing, which is more uh, current today in the COVID situation we are in. Accessories control, uh, we've touched some of these accessory controls already in terms of feeding data to other building, building management systems such as HVAC, but as a part of our extended product portfolio, in addition to control of light sources, we can also control blinds and curtain motors, fans, and numerous of other applications which require a simple AC on-off toggle into a smart control system. 
And lastly, for this slide, scalability and adaptability. In terms of scale, there's essentially no limit to the number of Bluetooth devices we can control within a single secure network. We have a capacity over 32,000 nodes, and you can deploy multiple secure networks at a site if necessary. But also in reference to scalability, the system is modular. It aligns itself to phased rollout just as much as it does a one-off, all encompassing installation. So fits in within the possibility for budgetary constraints or stage relocation plans. And for adaptability, it's possible to re relocate lighting nodes either into another position or direction within the same track or even to a different track with little or no reprogramming. This is particularly useful in a museum and gallery where environments, where exhibits and artworks may change according to different, uh, different exhibitions. In fact, we recently equipped a traveling art exhibition, which changes location every two weeks, not just with lighting and controls, but also real-time content delivery, including information related to each painting and supplemental interviews with the artist delivering uh, personal and handheld uh, devices during the viewing. The takeaway from this slide is that there's a smart, smart, smart wireless system and it can be so much more than just lighting control. So if you have any questions, please uh, put them into the, uh, into the chat. Okay, let's move on to some of the fundamentals of Bluetooth Mesh and why it's perfect choice as the basis for a controlled system. Firstly, open standards. We are part of a working group known as Special Interest Group or SIG within the Bluetooth Mesh. Put simply, compliance with the SIGMA standard means you can utilize equipment from multiple manuf manufacturers within the same network. From commercial perspective, we want to we want to make sure everyone, of course, to use Xicato, but at the same time, we're not forcing people down that route, as this is the case with other proprietary systems. There are around 36,000 members from the SIGMA group, including Apple, Nokia, Google, Silver, and many others. One other huge advantage of Bluetooth is that it's native uptake in the operating systems of smartphones, tablets, and other handheld devices. It's being propelled toward, forward by the biggest names in technology, such as Apple and Google, and supported by every major operating system like iOS, Android, Windows 10, Mac, Linux, etc. Its usage on all smartphones and tablets opens up opportunities for using these devices for lighting control via apps, which are similar to the ones everybody, everybody is familiar with. Secondly, it's simple and lower, lower cost. There are no control wires, no complex controllers, no complex data routing. It's easy to design, install, and use. And moreover, it's a robust system. The system intelligence is distributed through each node, so there's no single point of failure, unlike traditional wired systems and some of the other wireless alternatives. Finally, it su supports a full commercial lighting control feature set and it's fully scalable. This next slide makes a comparison between Bluetooth as the underlying wireless transport mechanism and some other wireless alternatives. This table was produced by the education. So we don't look, we, don't plan to look at uh, each of the uh, parameters itself, but highlight what are the advantages for Bluetooth. First of all, it's the OSI model indicated in the blue column on the left hand side of this slide. Actually, the OSI model consists of seven layers as opposed to the five that are shown here. The important thing is that each of these layers is defined within the SIGMESH standard, which is what ensures compatibility across standard-based devices. For all, the, for all other options, there are some proprietary definitions, meaning the user is tied to a specific system. The only option where this is not completely true is Wi-Fi, which is in itself a standard-based protocol. However, there's no definition at the application layer, so no, no tools specific to lighting control. As I said previously, the SIGMESH standard supports a full commercial lighting control feature set, and it's within this application layer 
that there are models for dimming, tunable white, and color control, as well as, as well as sensor reporting, timing, scheduling, and scene recall, grouping, and so on. Basically, all the facets of a lighting control system are specified into this model. Moving down on the left hand, the next in line is topology. As we already stated, there's a full mesh topology with distributed intelligence. The important point between being there is no single point of failure within the system. If a node stops working for any reason, then only that node is affected. Next one is range. The Bluetooth range is less than one meter and greater than 100 meter. Absolutely enough for any of the hundreds of installations that we've completed to date. Scalability. Again, we've already stated the number of supported nodes within a single secure network, which is over 32,000. And we can use multiple secure networks on a site. Interoperability. The dedication term here is nodes need mapping. I think that's the, that they're referring to the need of to provision a node before it can become part of a secure network. This is an officious requirement in terms of maintaining a secure network. And you couldn't have a situation where anybody could simply purchase a node, plug it in, and have it automatically join your lighting controls. So here, the nodes require mapping is actually a positive way. The next figure refers to latency. This is important by comparison to others. Bluetooth package or messages are short and propagate quickly across the network, taking around 350 to 400 microseconds from source to receiver. It's important to ensure all lights in the space receive and progress commands almost simultaneously so that intensity changes, for example, are seamless throughout the space. The bandwidth or speed around the Bluetooth network is two megabit per second, which is far higher than the Z-Wave or Zigbee, but far less than Wi-Fi. But that's only assuming you aren't sharing the Wi-Fi network with other applications. We are only sending short messages here to advertise status changes or register events. So two megabit per second is more than enough. The power consumption is very low, which keeps energy usage cost down and helps the environment. In fact, it's so low, we are able to run some devices on coin cells for up to 12 months. The installation base for Bluetooth is, and we've already said it, huge. Every PC, every phone, tablet, and health device contains a Bluetooth chip. And finally, Bluetooth is the only one of these four protocols that supports beacons, which is part of my next slide. So beacons, as I said, are native to our Bluetooth nodes. A beacon is basically a Bluetooth signal emitted periodically by our nodes, which are contained within luminaires or sensors. Think of it as an indoor GPS, but far more, far more accurate. A smartphone or tablet with Bluetooth turned on is able to detect the beacon. And we already said Bluetooth is native to millions of these devices and the phone operating system will Based the beacon information to any app installed on the device, which is programmed to recognize the beacon. The use here is massively <clears throat> wide ranging. We have a location aware system. It knows where you, or at least where your device is, assuming, of course, you have your phone with you. <laughs> Knowing where a person is means we can deliver relevant content to them. Retail outlets informing customers of special offers, new content, or upcoming events. Museum or art galleries delivering artifacts with specific information in text, pictorial, or even video format. In the current COVID climate, we see restaurants able to do away with hard copy menus, historic sites able to do away with communal headsets, and temporarily, we hope, replace human tour guides with interactive content delivery based on a person's location within the building. In addition, content, content delivery beacons can also provide information relating to movement resulting in the production of heat maps, showing not only where people congregate, but also for how long, which is again, very useful in retail, museums, and other tourist-based applications. And on top of all of this, beacons can be used to provide asset tracking. Lost or misplaced equipment is used cost in hospitals, for example. Everything from heart monitors to beds have been known to go missing. 
and not through malicious acts, just borrowing and forgetting to return or moving into a cupboard to clear a space. With beacons installed, location where services can provide equipment locations within a building. The next slide is a simple command flow example to show connectivity across all the products and try to give an idea of the breed and depth of the Xicata Controls product portfolio, but also how relatively similar and simple it is. If we start with number one on the far right, we have a main track with spot. This is a fact can be any mains light source. Attached to it is number two, a Xicato AC driver with Bluetooth mesh capability. We then repeat the setup according to light sources and its characteristics. On the left, we see a linear tape. In this case, with a one, two or four channel constant voltage driver, again, equipped with Bluetooth mesh. And of course, this can be any tape, but it can also be the Zicato XFL tape. Next to this, our XTM source, this is, and this time with a concurrent Bluetooth driver or XOB with a DALI connection, which is also Bluetooth enabled via Bluetooth to DALI bridge. And finally, our XIM, which has the Bluetooth capability integrated into the light source. It's worth pointing out that all the same drivers support light sources from other manufacturers, so sources, uh, so customers are really free to use their uh, light engine of choice. So numbers one and two are the light sources and Bluetooth driver are replicated across the diagram and communicate via the Bluetooth mesh, which are the dotted lines. So, so to, to some extent, the setup again is replicated in additional, none of these lighting devices shown in the box on the bottom left. The drivers here in this instance contain a Ficato Bluetooth card and therefore directly control and managed by our control system. These are, if you, if you like, are called our actors. And number three, four, five, and six are our directors. Three being a Bluetooth switch, switch attached to any of the, any uh, of a number of push button, faceplate, retro Dolby switches, or rotary dimmer. Four is a motion sensor. And five is the Cicato app or control panel software. And six is the op optional gateway, which links to third party control systems and or provides remote network connectivity. Each of these directors issues commands via button press, motion detecting, lux change, light control event, or application programming interface, specifically, uh, and the actors respond as directed. In the notes section, we make a reference today to the Xicato relay node, which is simply a non-lighting node used to extend the network range a route around transmission obstacles. Just to reiterate, all Bluetooth nodes can be into a scalable uh, installation up to 32,000 nodes within a single network. And we support many third party drivers and dimmers. In terms of building blocks, which make up the Cicato control system and to clarify the acronyms we use in single, hopefully simple to understand on this slide. First of all, the Cicato controls hardware. It's made of Cicato intelligent sensors, a motion sensor, and a lock sensor, but also temperature and humidity. Cicato intelligent switch, which converts a low voltage contact or a zero to 10 volt dimming switch from a third party vendor into Bluetooth. Cicato relay node, XRN, used to extend the reach of the Bluetooth mesh network. XIG, Cicato Intelligent Gateway, provides a bridge between the Bluetooth mesh network and IT network and provides a link to third party management consoles and building management systems and facilitates remote networking control. Cicato Control Card or XGC is a plug-in Bluetooth card, which enable the control of third-party devices. Then, Cicato control software, which compromises of the Cicato control panel, XCP, which is a PC or Mac and Mac-based software tool for system commissioning. The Cicato app, 
which is an iOS based application for lighting system control and limited commissioning and Staccato BLE firmware, which may be licensed and integrated by third parties. We then have Staccato services, which incorporate system commissioning and training services, and an option for us to control and monitor customer lighting systems and provide energy savings. And finally, the Staccato third party support, which covers the drivers, dimmers, bridges, and software, which are manageable within our system. We will expand to the latter one in the, for, further in the presentation. Let's show, look at another uh, use case. This is the TD Garden Boston, which is home of the famous NHL franchise Boston Bruins and the NBA's Boston Celtics and hosts over three and a half million people actively and world famous concerts, sporting events, family shows, wrestling and ice shows. The installation is in the shop, which comprises of 294 XIM light sources and 241 third-party devices with in, which incorporate the Cicato control card. This is a complete end-to-end -end solution. Cicato lighting is used to illuminate the shop on a day-to-day -day basis, but there's also an integration angle here. Using the Cicato open API platform and our intelligent gateway, ETC has created a software module within their Mosaic show controller to send instructions to the XAM light sources and third-party devices to trigger preset scenes. Now, when the team scores, even shoppers in, this, in the store get to know. Next project is the London Science Museum, which is a uh, purpose-built two-story event space. So within the museum, they actually uh, use two floors to create an event space. The lighting system compromises uh, 527 light sources, including third party for channel drivers to provide control over the RGB W linear tapes installed in decorative pendants shown here in the picture on the left. These lights are pre-programmed with 14 presets, which can be recalled from a series of push buttons using our XSW and via purpose-built iOS app. The image on the left depicts one of these scenes. Coupled with this, on the lower floor, there's a DMX grid shown here in the picture on the right. The integration here is done in reverse to previous example. On the lower floor, a button press on a switch panel triggers a Bluetooth signal, which adjusts the XAM lighting levels and is recorded by a XIG gateway and forwarded in this time to the lighting playback controller from Faros controls, which triggers the DMX grid again into one of the 14 pre-recorded scenes. In both cases, we're using our own lighting system in conjunction with third-party lighting, drivers and playback devices to create a fully integrated control system. Next, we're going to look at the system specification. The process is always the same, exactly of a building type, size or usage. Lighting designers will specify the light source and fixture pictures. If the specified light source contains integrated Bluetooth control, such as our own XIM, then no further action is required at this point. If the light source requires a Bluetooth interface, we determine the type of driver based on the pile requirements. Is it AC or DC? Is there a constant current or constant voltage? How many channels are required? One, two, four. Is a zero to 10 volt or daily bits required? Using the answer to these questions, select the appropriate driver from the comparative range. We then move on the accessories for control requirements and determine the number of location, number and location of centers, the number of location of gateways, the number of location of switches, and third party non-lighting requirements such as fans, blinds, and the number of, and location of relay nodes. And again, select each of these from the product portfolio. The next step involves detailed discussions with the client regarding how to control the system and how to operate it. What group should de be defined, what scenes are required, how each group control and scene recall is to be triggered, and how lights will behave in, in response to individual triggers. And we need to create a plan to ensure all requirements are covered and all the required hardware has been determined. 
we can then create a project in the initiation document during the, this phase, which defines roles, responsibilities, and each aspect of the system operating operation, including interfacing with third party equipment. The same document is also used to deliver customer sign off once the project is completed and ready for handover. Following equipment installation, we move into the commissioning phase. This can be carried out by people having undergone Cicato certified training or as a service offered by Cicato, which includes control planning, on-site provisioning, configuration, and verification, documenting all features and requirements to ensure commissioning can commence once the hardware is installed, and finally on completion and over to the customer. The service doesn't include, of course, the installation of the hardware. Now let's have a look at the software services provided by Xicato. First of all, service deployment is available, which incorporates training, commissioning, and of course, technical support. We also provide ongoing application development to both the Zicato control panel commissioning tool and our mobile app. And we offer platform development, which incorporates software firmware licensing and distribution server, X server database application servers, which is a side server or gateway platform deployment and X cloud application server. Now, in the final part of this presentation, we look at some of the specific of the, the third party integrations I mentioned uh, throughout. For my hardware perspective, we work alongside ULAM, which is a manufacturer of a wide range of BLE to zero to ten volt bridges, two and four channel PWM dimmers, trading X dimmers, BLE enabled blind and curtain motors, and AC device controls, as well as lens vector controls, all of which contain the Zicato XGC card. Entity on the top right provides us with a compatible Bluetooth daily bridge, again, incorporating the same XGC card. They've also started to uh, develop uh, multiple, multiple channel console voltage dimmers as well. And then Macron, uh, bottom left, uh, and GRE Alpha. GRE Alpha isn't listed here, but they have actually products uh, that incorporate one and two channel LED drivers, but also uh, in track uh, mains voltage drivers using our Bluetooth XCC card. And finally, on the bottom right, Bushveld, who developed a miniature track driver de developed using our final uh, Xicato firmware. So they don't use the card, but actually flash the firmware on their uh, driver. So there's only fun how the one final hardware component we've incorporated in the system, which we like to touch on. These are energy harvesting switches. Manufactured by Inotion and incorporated into button panels by many companies such as Vimar, Nico, Jung, Gira, and many others. These devices require no mains power, no batteries, cells, and no wires. These are energy, uh, these, they harvest energy from the button press. There are two and four button versions available in standard US and EU form factors, and they come in a range of finishes and colors. They can be used as a portable device or attached to a wall. Each button press is translated into a Bluetooth signal and generates a command which Cicato control devices can then interpret and respond with a simple on off, raise lower intensity to a pre-programmed value or recall a preset scene. In terms of software, we are engaged with companies such as Lama Digital, Physical Web, Connection, and Guidekick in the development of beacon, beacon enabled apps. And to date, we have controls integrations with many more than actually are listed here. Uh, I name a few Faros, Medialon, Legrand Integrated Systems, also known as Vantage, Iridium, Lumify, Extron, Pelus Dynalite, Crestron, and many others to come, such as ABB and Backoff. This concludes the presentation. We try to demonstrate that Zakato wireless smart control system delivers an end-to-end -end solution from under one roof, incorporating the hardware, software, and services requirements to meet all your customers' needs. I do hope it's been of interest, and I'm happy to take any questions now.
Uh, at the moment, I don't see any questions coming. Okay, I think then we're going to finish this uh, this webinar. Uh, we thank you all for your attendance and. Uh, if you need any more information, you can go visit the website www.luxandia.com or send an email to info at luxandia.com. Thank you very much. Yes, Patrick, thank you very much for this webinar. And I want to thank you all for uh, visiting this webinar. If there are any questions, uh, contact your salesperson or send us an email at info at luxandia.com or visit our website. Thanks you, thank you all for listening and speak to you soon. Bye-bye.